Hi, I'm Leslie Wamsley, an artist in Brooklyn, New York. I'm a landscape painter and I work outside in a style of painting called plein air. Outdoor painting, open air painting. You probably think of this style of painting when you think of impressionists and artists like Monet. They really popularized the style around the turn of the century. I love working outside because it's a direct and observational way to respond to the landscape. However, it does have its drawbacks. It's very weather dependent and it's not as consistent as maybe working indoors in a studio. Last summer, for example, when I was an artist in residence in Indiana, Pennsylvania at the Spruce, I worked outside plein air throughout the area and it was a wonderful way to really learn about the landscape in that part of the country. But it does rain a lot there. So after my experience in Indiana, I started to develop strategies so that I could work inside on days that I need to. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of those motifs and it's a window drawing. So we'll be making a plein air drawing out the window. I'll talk to you about the materials, the concepts, and how to set up the drawing so that you can make your own work in your own space. Okay, let's get started. You can use whatever you have around. That's a great thing about drawing. So you could use just a regular sheet of notebook paper and a number two pencil if that's what you have. It can get as simple or as complicated as you want or the materials that you have. I'm working with colored pencils today because that's something that I'm interested in right now. I have the pencils kind of arranged by color but also by temperature so that I can easily think about the warm cool relationships that we'll be talking about. I also have some pencils, some regular pencils. I have an H, a 5H, and a 6B. H stands for hardness and B stands for blackness. So the 5H pencil is going to be a very hard pencil. It's the hardest pencil that I'm working with today. So it's going to be the lightest because it's the hardest. The H pencil is kind of like a middle point, so a medium pressure, I'll get a mid-tone. And then the 6B I'll be able to use to make darker marks because it's the blackest of the pencils that I have. I also have a number six graphite stick. So this will allow me, rather than something like the point, the longer edge of this, I'll be able to do longer sweeping motions. So it's a different type of mark that I'll be able to get out of this tool specifically. I have a gum eraser. This is my favorite type of eraser. I also have a Magic Rub Prismacolor eraser, but I don't really use this that much. It's more of a blending tool. This is more for working reductively. The paper that I'm using is a pretty strong, it's a durable kind of all, all media sketch, good kind of drawing paper. It's called Fabriano Folio Paper. I need a paper that's gonna be strong rather than maybe something like a Japanese paper or something that's gonna be a little bit um, softer. The razor blades that I have, I use to sharpen the pencils. I also use the razor blades to cut the erasers into smaller sections so that I can have kind of an eraser with a sharper edge if I need that at certain times in the drawing. I have the paper taped to a piece of foam core. I don't really like working in sketchbooks or in pads of paper because sometimes if you're holding the pad, all the pages underneath can get dirty or they'll get impressions on. So I like to take the paper out of the sketchbook or out of the pad of paper and mount it just quickly with tape tabs. You can see when you look at the tab, I'm not taping over. The tab actually is behind and then the paper is taped on. So the entire surface of the paper is available for me as I'm working. All right, so I'm about to start the drawing. I'm set up, I have my materials ready, I'm seated, I'm comfortable. I found a point of view that I like. I'm gonna be looking out the window right in front of me. So let's get started. Okay, so I start every drawing with a grid. I drop in a grid of thirds I just find it's a nice way to kind of break the ice, get the drawing started, and think about composition. So it's really a compositional tool. For these window drawings, the ones I've been working with lately, I've kind of been dropping the window in the center column, but you could really have any kind of composition that you like. I think I'm going to have my window here, I'm just kind of like loosely, I'm using the H pencil, kind of thinking about just how I want the basic composition. I'm going to use this graphite to kind of quickly kind of just like block in. So I'm going to start with the background. The background is the sky, the buildings in the back, working up towards the tree, and then I'm gonna do the building and the interior. So I'm gonna do the curtains and the interior later in the drawing. I'm gonna start first with the sky. I'm 
something warmer, maybe back here. I'm just blocking in generally kind of where I see the horizon line back here. Using neutral tones, nothing too saturated. Kind of just thinking about how I want to organize the space. I'm making, there's not strong light, but I am making where the light is hitting, kind of a little bit warmer. Okay, so I'm just building up some more of the value in the sky, building on this concept of background to foreground. Another part of background to foreground, this concept, is general to specific. They kind of go hand in hand. So you can see I'm working this generally. I'm just trying to get an understanding of what's going on with the, the foundation of the composition, the contrast elements, and I'm just trying to figure those things out quickly so that I can move through generally. I'm not worried about edges, for example. You can see that everything has kind of a loose edge. I'm just building everything in a very general kind of way, just establishing relationships right now. I want to get some tone in for the other areas of the drawing because I don't want to get too sucked into this area. I do want to kind of block in other relationships so that the whole thing can start to fill out slowly, not just, I don't want to work the background, for example, from start to finish. I want to kind of start to build it and then move on and just keep cycling through and bouncing through the different sections of the drawing as it comes together. So next I'm going to think about blocking in this area. tone so that it fades more into the background so that I can create the illusion of it being back. I'm going to build some of this background stuff. With blues. So it kind of melts into that background. And I can kind of build the body of it I'm really trying to look out while I'm working and not look at my drawing too much and really trust kind of what I'm seeing. Because if not, I'll just be working around things in my drawing and it's, it's too scary if you just look at your drawing. <laughs> it starts to just kind of bounce around. They kind of are right at the end. It's just that kind of like beginning of spring. They're kind of just like all. can have this area can kind of come in a little heavier it's closer this lower portion is a little bit closer to the foreground so we could think about that as we start to build this I'm really trying to look mostly at the window as I kind of bounce it around I set up the spatial relationship so that things that are like lighter in value are receding things that are darker are kind of coming towards us in the foreground Again, you really want to stay focused. I don't want to look at my drawing and be like, oh, there's a branch here and here and kind of dot every branch. I'm still trying to kind of bounce around. It doesn't matter if, say, a flower doesn't connect to a specific, you know, shape. We can fill that in or it's just, it's more of an impression or just the overall movement that I'm looking for to look more realistic. I've established the background, the value relationships between the background, this kind of middle ground here with this very dark value of the window. So 
that took a while to kind of build up to, to really be brave enough to start to build those dark values on top of. Now I'm moving into the foreground. I'm going to try to figure out how to do the value in these curtains. Once I start to build the value in the curtains, then I'll go through and start to refine some of these edge relationships and decide what I want to tighten up. But now I'm thinking about how can I kind of move this. And you'll notice now the composition is a little bit different. As I worked, I decided to open up the window so that it would travel up through that part of the uh, composition. Rather than closing it in, I kind of extended the window so that I could get a different proportion. Okay, so one thing that I do a lot when I'm working is squinting. So I'm really trying to figure out, I know that these curtains need to be darker. I just am trying to figure out the temperature and exactly how dark, because this area, when I look in the background is the brightest value section. So now it's about putting these dark values on top of so that this can be really bright and contrasty back there. Okay, so as I'm working, I'm really trying to decide, you know, what elements do I want to include? What elements do I want to kind of um, highlight? How do I want to focus the energy of my observation? But you never want to work around things. You have to kind of keep building the drawing in layers, general to specific, all over background to foreground. You can't kind of pick and choose where you're gonna do it. It has to be holistic the way you build the drawing. The curtains are the thing that are closest to us in the foreground. So once you arrive at your foreground, then you're deciding, okay, how much do I wanna resolve this? In this case, I wanna resolve it enough so that the value clicks in immediately when you look at the image, it makes sense. Okay, so the light's been changing. I'm just working with the light scenario as it changes as I go. I don't, I just, as it moves, I move with it. So don't worry if the light changes. That's an inevitable part of, you know, working observationally. The scenario changes as you work and you're just trying to capture it as you can. It also is a way to push you to finish the drawing because you know that the scenario is changing quickly and if you want to get it done, then you have to kind of push into the last phases. Okay, now we have a little bit of soft dimension through there. This doesn't feel as muddy, feels desaturated, feels cohesive. It's, there's a lot of color happening in there, but kind of feels like it's a part of the same universe, you know? Okay, so it's been about five hours. I finished the drawing. As you can see, I made some changes to the composition. I opened the window up. I have the interior space. Still, I like the relationship of the background, the plein air, the nature aspect, the middle ground, which is kind of the window, and then the foreground, which are the curtains and the kind of the implied space close to us. In the drawing, one thing that I like to think about when I'm working is variety of edges and resolution. So you can see the background is left pretty loose and abstract. The space is receding, but then we have this uh, contrast in the edge we get kind of a sharper edge, a different kind of line that's in contrast, it's in juxtaposition to this organic stuff in the background. We get something that's a little bit more angular and then we get the ripple of the curtain that kind of goes, you know, a little bit more orderly. It's kind of in between the abstraction of the background and the kind of geometry in the front. The curtain's kind of like a nice in between. But the main thing is in the drawing, everything doesn't have to be resolved to the same degree. You can have areas that are more open and that are more implied and areas that come together in ways that are a little bit more kind of firm or complete. A nice drawing has a, a mixture of both, I think. Thank you so much for joining me in my drawing session today, the plan air drawing out the window. I also want to thank Pennsylvania Rural Art Alliance, Spruce Arts, and the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts for supporting this video. You can do this type of drawing wherever you are. You don't need a studio. You can do it with whatever materials you have, like I said, a regular piece of paper or pencil, or if you have color pencils, markers, whatever you like, you can do this drawing from any room, any place.